So far in our discussion of existentialism, we focused on those themes that uh, give existentialism its reputation for being a, a gloomy, uh, absurdist approach to philosophy, dwelling on themes of meaningless and so on. And we've seen how existentialism is uh, critical. It's critical of traditional religion. Uh, it's critical of the scientific project, uh, both projects they see as being dehumanizing to the human being. So are we then left with, uh, with emptiness? God is dead. Science wants to turn us into mechanical robots. The universe is ultimately empty. We're left with feelings of anxiety, dread, abandonment, aloneness, and so forth. Well, not necessarily. Uh, there is a positive project that is possible within existentialism, and I wanted to try to uh, sketch a few directions here. But again, this is a, 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 a project that we have to embark on with some caution because uh, we know that the existentialists are opposed to any form of prescriptivism and I don't want to come across in any way as being authoritarian, is authoritarian and saying this is what you have to do and uh, here are all of the right existentialist answers all wrapped in a nice pretty package with a bow and all you have to do is unwrap it and follow the recipe and so on. There are no recipes. But I think there are some uh, guidelines or rules of thumb, maybe even calling it a rule is too strong here, some principles right, that we can, we can adopt that can help point us in, the, in, in a positive direction for this existentialist project. Now the project that we are embarking on is the central project for the human condition, finding and actualizing a meaningful life. The existentialists will say, in one respect, the death of God should be liberating because that expands the range of choices that are open to us. It empowers us and realizes that rather than God scripting us, we can be the authors of our own script. We are the powers that be. We are the creative individuals who are going to, in effect, create the meaning of life rather than having this off-the-shelf, ready-made life handed to us and we just have to slip into the uniform, so to speak. We have choice and we have responsibility for the choices we make. Now, is there anything more than that, though, that we can say? Because that leaves things fairly wide open. It's just simply a matter of my making some choices, making some commitments, and then taking responsibility for, for whatever happens. Yes, there is a little bit more that might be, might be helpful here. First thing I would say is that from the existentialist perspective, the existentialist philosophical perspective, one useful thing to keep in mind is, there are going to be three points uh, that I'm going to make here. The first one is that the existentialist will encourage us to see that valuing, meaning, is only accessible from a subjective perspective. Right? There are no such things as objective values, there are no such things as intrinsic values out there in the world waiting for us to discover. Value is something that comes from the first person and is only accessible right, to the first person. It's not accessible from the, from the third person or from an external type of perspective. Let me give you a couple of examples here. Suppose, for some bizarre reason, you decide uh, as a philosophical experiment in the meaning of life to, uh, to watch an accountant at work. So you show up at the accountant's office uh, first thing in the morning and you just sit there all day and you watch her work uh, at her computer uh, doing accounting. And so what you see for eight hours is she does some stuff here, maybe she moves the mouse around, sips some coffee, maybe makes some side notes, and so on. At the end of the day, the accountant pushes back from her computer and saying, wow, that was a really good day at work. I got a lot of really cool stuff done. And then you're sitting there saying, uh, I don't get it, right? I don't, I don't see why that was such a, a, a meaningful and significant perspective, or a, 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 a day that, uh, that you engaged in. And of course, you can't see it from that third person observer perspective. The value and meaning and significance of her engaging in accountancy as her profession is accessible only to her, right? It's a subjective state, uh, subjective valuing here. 
All right, another uh, uh, example here to try to drive this point home as well. Suppose, and this is a little bit of a creepier example here, suppose you are interested in another thing that gives people meaning in their lives, their careers, uh, aside from their careers, say love and friendship and so forth. So you go to the park and it's a beautiful late spring day and over on a park bench you see a young couple sitting together and clearly they are in love with each other or at least infatuated with each other and you're interested in this phenomenon of love. So you go walking over the, to them and you stare very closely at them while they're gazing deeply and rapidly into each other's eyes and holding hands and so forth. And then after a certain while you say, I, I, I don't get it, I don't, I don't see the love, I'm not feeling the, the, the affection and the passion here. And of course, the point is that that's absurd. You're not ever going to experience and feel the passion from that external third person right, perspective. The experience of the love, that value is first personal or intimately second personal between those two subjects right, that are making a certain kind of connection to each other. It's not something that is, impossi that is possibly pers uh, uh, graspable from an external perspective. So, value, to put it in philosophical language from the existentialist perspective, is subjective. It is personal. And this is where the existentialists will criticize much of traditional philosophy, which they see as encouraging us as to think of value as in some sense impersonal, as out there, right? That there's kind of this generic value floating around in the world, and our job is to discover, right, value, right, out there in the world, or that somehow value just happens to us, uh, which is not the way it works from the, from the existentialist perspective. There's no, there is no God up there who wrote things down on tablets, and that is the recording of what is objectively valuable, right, and so forth. It's, it's not out there, value is in here. So that is uh, a useful direction. Uh, focus on the subjective, focus on the personal, focus on, on the first person, so to speak.